Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So today, we're going to be telling a rather familiar story. It's the story of an amazing drug that was developed to treat one of the most terrible curses that people can possibly experience in their lifetimes. This miracle drug was approved by the FDA decades ago after clinical trials involving thousands of subjects in which it was clinically proven to be both safe and effective. But then, many, many years after it was put on the market, people began claiming that the drug caused all sorts of problems like depression and even suicide. The media hyped up these reports and the drug company that invented the drug was the target of many frivolous lawsuits involving millions of dollars. Online forums that were devoted to the supposed sufferers of these neurological effects began sprouting up everywhere all over the internet. These fear-mongering hate groups put so much pressure on the FDA that eventually a black box warning was added to the drug's package insert in hopes of maybe quelling this angry online hate mob even though there was no scientific proof linking the drug to these neurological effects. However, in the hope that some biological rationale for these bogus side effects could be found one day, certain researchers published papers claiming that the drug affected neurotransmitters in the brain based on, you guessed it, rat studies. People even claimed that the side effects from this drug could be permanent, and online sport groups were soon formed where people who claimed to have permanent side effects could share their sad stories online, and if anyone ever showed any skepticism or ask them to back up their claims with any evidence-based data, they'd be accused of being heartless monsters who were being funded by Big Pharma blood money. So by now, I know you chooms have figured out what drug I am talking about. The drug I am talking about is <coughs> not finasteride. Surprised? Well, what I'm actually talking about is another drug called isotretinoin, otherwise known by its trade name Accutane. So I know what you're thinking, but Kevin, this is a hair loss channel. Why are you talking about Accutane, which is an acne drug, bro? Well, this actually isn't the first time I've discussed Accutane on this channel because it turns out that Accutane in very rare circumstances can actually cause hair loss. And I made a video about that, which I'll link below, but that isn't why I decided to talk about Accutane today. What prompted me to create today's video was that I came across some anti-Accutane subreddits where people were claiming that Accutane destroyed their entire lives. I was immediately struck by the remarkable parallels between the online fear-mongering about Accutane and the fear-mongering about Finasteride, even though the two drugs are completely unrelated and they treat two completely different conditions. I also found new research that shows that Accutane has been falsely demonized just like Finasteride has been, and we'll go over that research soon. It turns out, though, that Accutane's supposed neurological side effects and long-term side effects are just as fake as finasterides. So let's take a look at the story of Accutane and see what lessons we can apply to the story of finasteride. So the story of Accutane is very similar to the story of finasteride, but Accutane was developed first, about 20 years before finasteride in fact. Accutane is one of the trade names of the drug isotretinoin, which is a synthetic retinoid, meaning it is a derivative of vitamin A. As you can see, it is chemically similar to the drug tretinoin. Tretinoin is a topical acne drug that I've talked about a lot on this channel since it activates the sulfotransferase enzyme, which is the enzyme that converts minoxidil into its active form, minoxidil sulfate. Because of this, top Topical tretinoin is very useful since it can turn minoxidil non-responders into responders, and I'll link my video where I talk about that specific effect below. It is also interesting that tretinoin was developed by one of the more prominent figures of the Hair Cafe cinematic universe, Dr. Albert Kligman, who is also the scientist who first described the condition known as telogen effluvium. Although Dr. Kligman was definitely brilliant, and he made some extremely important contributions to hair loss research, he also had a rather evil side to him because he performed unethical experiments on prisoners. But if you're interested in him and his work, I talk about him more in my video on telogen effluvium that I'll link below. Anyways, isotretinoin was derived from tretinoin by the Swiss big pharma company known as F. Hoffman La Roche, usually referred to just as Roche Laboratories. It was first synthesized in the 1960s as an anti-cancer drug, but it ended up being ineffective for that. However, in the 1970s, it was discovered that it worked really well for severe acne. It then went through clinical trials and was approved for clinical use by the FDA in 1989 for acne exactly 10 years before finasteride was first approved for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Like finasteride, Accutane can cause birth defects, so it definitely shouldn't be taken by pregnant women or by women who are trying to get pregnant. Depression and suicide weren't originally considered to be a side effect of the drug. In fact, the clinical trials of Accutane consistently showed improvements in self-esteem with most studies showing improvements in mood and quality of life that went along with the successful treatment of acne from using the drug. However, because of 
some case reports of depression and suicide that appeared in the 1990s, the FDA added depression to the list of possible drug side effects in the package insert back in 1998. The FDA said there was a, quote, possible connection, though there is no evidence, unquote. That's really interesting because the FDA said pretty much the exact same thing when they added depression to the list of possible side effects of finasteride in 2022. Anyways, just like finasteride, many hyped up media reports started appearing highlighting stories of Accutane supposedly causing depression, therefore leading to suicide in young people. Here's one of the first reports. This one was from the year 2000. It tells us about a high school student who killed himself with his father's gun after a prom night party. His father was Bart Stupak, who was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. The father, maybe feeling guilty that his son used his gun to kill himself, decided that the only explanation for the suicide was that his son was taking Accutane. In fact, he even led hearings in Congress questioning the safety of Accutane. An even bigger story than that was this one here from 2002. This was about four months after 9-11 happened. So what happened in the story was a 15-year-old boy stole a plane and flew it into a skyscraper, very much echoing the events of 9-11, but on a smaller scale. The boy left a note expressing sympathy for Osama bin Laden. However, the boy's family decided that the reason he did all this was because he was on Accutane. I actually remember hearing about this story on the news because I was still in college back in 2002, but I think it's pretty clear here that blaming Accutane was just this family's means of coping with their son's horrible decision, and I can only imagine what kind of grief this must have caused the family, but it is obvious that it was Islamic extremism that motivated this boy, not Accutane. An acne drug isn't going to start make you admiring Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda after all. So, these cases and others resulted in multi-million dollar lawsuits against Roche. However, even though there were reports of depression and suicide on Accutane, it did not appear that the incidence of these tragedies was any greater than in adolescents in general, especially considering that acne itself, of course, causes depression. Nevertheless, bowing under intense pressure, the FDA added a black box warning to Accutane in 2005, warning that it could cause depression and suicide. So just like with finasteride, articles started appearing in the mainstream media, like this one here from The Atlantic claiming that Accutane could cause not only depression and suicide, but also cause other neurological side effects like insomnia, anxiety, emotional lability, and self-harm. Even worse, people started complaining about depression and other side effects happening long after Accutane was stopped. Sound familiar, Chooms? If the drug Accutane was not mentioned in these articles, I would swear I was reading yet another hit piece on finasteride. Just like people believe there is a post-finasteride syndrome, there are also claims about Accutane causing post-Accutane syndrome. This article describes the syndrome and notes that is just based on people claiming that they had permanent side effects from Accutane on certain Facebook pages and YouTube channels. However, the authors of this article are definitely puzzled on how Accutane could still cause side effects years after it was stopped. They write, quote, it is uncertain how symptoms experienced by interviewees years later could be attributed to isotretinoin as its elimination half-life is about 20 hours, unquote. That's a little common sense that maybe Dr. Trash and Dr. Earwood could benefit from the next time the PFS Foundation pays them to do yet another rat study on finasteride. Anyways, if you really believe Accutane can cause depression, then you have to believe that it is doing something to the chemistry of the brain, right? After all, depression is a neurological condition. So, of course, there is always some rodent study that both the anti-finasteride and the anti-Accutane people can pull out of their ass to prove that these drugs can mess up your brain chemistry. In the case of Accutane, it studies like this one here that shows that dopamine levels in mice can be affected by retinoids and, of course, isotretinoids is a retinoid, but these artificial studies don't really prove anything about whether a drug like Accutane can really affect human brain dopamine and cause depression. Fortunately though, just this year, there was a study released that puts an end to this fear-mongering about Accutane once and for all. It's this study right here titled, quote, Risk of Suicide and Psychiatric Disorders Among Isotretinoin Users, a Meta-Analysis, unquote. This study, as it says, is a meta-analysis. What that means is that it's a study that combines the data from many prior studies to come up with results that are more statistically valid than just one singular study. A meta-analysis is at the top of the pyramid of medical evidence, so it is one of the most reliable types of studies that can possibly be done. So one way to look at a meta-analysis is that it takes the best studies done on a drug and combines the studies together to get the most accurate data available about the drug. So the investigators in the study reviewed 25 studies of Accutane and depression and ended up including 24 studies in their meta-analysis. These studies included the amazingly huge number of 
1,625,891 subjects who either got Accutane or a placebo. The study looked at the incidence of depression and suicide in the subjects taking Accutane and then compared that incidence with the incidence of depression in the general population. The researchers also compared the incidence of both these problems in subjects using Accutane versus subjects who did not take Accutane. Well, there are a lot of percentages and statistics presented in the paper, so the easiest way to really understand the results here is to look at the graphs in the article. However, the graphs are also very, very detailed, so let me just try to summarize each of them for you. This article is fortunately not behind a paywall, and I'll link the reference below in case you want to look at more of the details for yourself. The first graph looks at the risk of suicide, attempted suicide, and suicidal thoughts in Accutane users. The risk of successfully committing suicide was 0.07% per year on Accutane. There was a 0.14% incidence of suicide attempts, a 0.47% incidence of suicidal thoughts, and a 0.35% incidence of self-harm. This risk was lower than the population studies in adolescents, which give the risk of suicide attempts at between 0.85% and 1.3%. The risk of depression is shown in this graph here. The overall risk of depression was 3.8% per year, which is in the range of other studies of adolescents, which showed a risk between 3.3% and 5.72%. But the most important graph overall is this one here. It compares the risk of attempting suicide in subjects who took Accutane versus subjects who did not take Accutane. The graph shows that there was no increased risk of suicide in subjects taking Accutane. None. In fact, between two and four years after taking Accutane, the risk of suicide actually significantly decreased. A similar analysis showed no association between Accutane use and depression, mood changes, sleep disturbances, or any other neurological disorders. So, the investigators summarized the results in this way. Quote, This meta-analysis of 24 studies, including 1,625,891 participants, suggests a low absolute risk and no increased relative risk of suicide and psychiatric disorders among patients taking isotretinoin. In fact, our findings suggest that isotretinoin may be associated with the lower risk of suicide attempt at two to four years following treatment, unquote. In addition, the researchers found that there was a higher risk of suicide if there was a history of previous psychiatric illness, which isn't surprising at all. But they also found that the higher dose of Accutane you were on, the lower your risk of suicide was. So it's pretty clear that not treating acne is what increases the risk of depression and suicide. If you treat it with an effective drug like Accutane, the risk of suicide actually goes way down. That that is because it is the disease that causes depression and suicide, not the drug that treats the disease. That's clearly been shown to be true with Accutane in the article I just went over, and it's true with finasteride too. If anything, hair loss has even more of a negative impact on our lives than acne does, since acne usually resolves as we get older, but hair loss, it only gets worse with age if we don't treat it, and once the hair is gone, it's usually gone for good. People from the finasteride-hating communities and Accutane-hating communities have claimed that both drugs can cause severe depression and even suicide, yet we know both balding and acne are very, very depressing conditions that by themselves can make depression worse, which in some extreme cases can even drive some people to suicide. Drugs that treat these horribly depressing conditions like androgenic alopecia and acne can actually relieve symptoms of depression. So telling people who are suffering from depression because of their hair loss that finasteride is too dangerous of a drug for them to even consider will only make them feel hopeless and therefore make their depression worse. Likewise, telling people with severe acne that it is too dangerous to take Accutane will only make them more depressed than they already were. People who either take the drug and then find out that they have to stop the drug because of side effects, whether they're real side effects or imagined side effects, are in the worst situation of all. They know that their disease will progress and that there is nothing they can really do about it. These people are naturally at the greatest risk to develop depression. But then, to add insult to injury, they'll then read about post-Accutane syndrome or post-Finasteride syndrome, and then suddenly they can blame their depression on the drug that they used to take that has now been out of their system for months or years and that has nothing to do with their depression at all. But since depression by its very nature is a persistent condition that can last for years, it is very, very easy for people to be tricked into believing that finasteride they took in the past is causing their depression. And since depression can cause erectile dysfunction, it is very easy for people to believe that finasteride is causing
causing persistent sexual side effects as well. But since they're seeking out advice from organizations that tell them there is no cure, they'll think there is no point in trying to get proper help. This will cause them to slip further and further into the downward spiral and blackness of depression, which may drive them to take their own lives. I mean, just think about this for a moment. Imagine if your best friend came to you saying that he took a drug a while back and was feeling extremely depressed to the point where he was considering taking his own life. What would you tell him? Would you tell him that there is nothing he can do about it and that he's going to suffer forever? You'd have to be an absolute psychopath to say something like that to a depressed person, but that is what anti finasteride groups tell people every single day, and that kind of rhetoric being amplified on social media is what is driving all these people to suicide. Not finasteride, not Accutane. So, let me go ahead and summarize what I think is going on here exactly, Jones. Drugs like Accutane and Finasteride were developed to treat cosmetically disfiguring conditions like acne and hair loss, and they turned out to be the most effective treatments for these conditions ever developed. During the initial randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials, there was no evidence that these drugs caused any mood disorders like depression. If anything, treating these cosmetic conditions most likely improved the mental state of most of the people using these drugs. However, mood disorders like depression are already prevalent in the general population and are even more prevalent amongst adolescents lessons with acne and amongst hair loss sufferers. So, after these drugs were released, some cases of depression were reported amongst people using these drugs even though they were not actually related to these drugs. These cases were then amplified by the news media. In the case of Accutane, there were high profile cases like the son of the congressman who committed suicide or the kid who flew his plane into a skyscraper while trying to emulate the followers of Osama bin Laden. There were similar stories about finasteride, blaming finasteride for cases of, of depression and suicide. Then social media amplified them further and made it seem like anyone taking these drugs would be doomed to have all these terrible side effects. The final stage in this process is that people started claiming that they had prolonged side effects from these drugs that didn't go away when the drugs were stopped. These post-drug syndromes were then given a veneer of legitimacy by organizations like the PFS Foundation who provide an echo chamber for the supposed sufferers of these syndromes and then collect money to fund more useless rodent studies to try to prove that the syndrome they are claiming is real has some scientific scientific basis, which of course it doesn't. This has happened with finasteride, and it has also happened with Accutane. I've even heard people claim that post-minoxidil syndrome is a real thing too. The motivation of these groups for spreading all this fear and misinformation about finasteride are partially financial, since anti-finasteride organizations rely on donations in order to stay afloat, but they're also a coping mechanism for people who are just too afraid to use finasteride. For some people, the idea of using finasteride is just too overwhelmingly terrifying, and no amount of scientific evidence will ever convince them that it is a safe drug. So, rather than just subscribe to Bald Cafe, shave their heads, and move on with their lives, they have to glue their asses to their computer desk chair and then spend all their free time trying to warn people about finasteride's supposed dangers since that is how they rationalize their cowardice. These people hate finasteride users because every time someone has a good experience with finasteride, it is a reminder of their failures. These finasteride haters, though, they don't give a shit about you. It just makes them feel better knowing that they're not alone in their misery, so they want you to join them in being miserable. Finally, it has always been curious to me how it seems like every drug in the market that pisses people off will always have some sort of post-drug syndrome thing about it of some sort, meaning that the side effects never go away. Or even more bizarre, the claim that the side effects can start up years after stopping the drug. It is clear that post-finasteride syndrome, post-accutane syndrome, or post-whatever-the-fuck-you-can-possibly-imagine syndrome are all just basically for-profit businesses. The people who run these businesses are are grifters to the extreme who want your money to do research on a condition that doesn't even exist. 50 years from now, these grifters will still be around peddling their same fear-mongering and misinformation about whatever controversial treatments exist in the future, because so long as there exist fools, there will always be people who will convince them to willingly part with their money over some bogus, fake, post-drug syndrome charity thing. But fortunately, I am here, and my job here at Hair Cafe is to call out these grifting con artists so you Chooms won't fall into the same fear-mongering rabbit hole that I did when I first started taking finasteride. This fear-mongering that I was exposed to, it led me to be inconsistent with my treatment protocol, so much so to the point that I needed two hair transplants to make up just a fraction of the lost ground that I squandered by not staying on finasteride sooner, and I am not going to stand for that happening to anybody else. Hell no. So, at the very least, I do hope this video will convince you to be more skeptical about these post-drug syndrome foundations that seem to be popping up all over the internet these days. Don't fall for the grift, they only want your money. Alright, 
That's all for now. Thank you for watching here, Lost Witchers. God bless.